Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Basics, we're going to take a look at hit tests on Zim, zimjs.com. And uh, hit tests are when two, uh, you detect when two objects are hitting one another. There's a variety of different ways to do it. It can get a little tricky at times, but the general basic idea is pretty easy. Sometimes it, the tricky part is when to ask for the hit test. As a matter of fact, uh, we go through all of that, all of the problems that we've seen happen down here in the tips. So here's the tips. And if you look up hitting or hit test, I think it is. Hit test. There it is right there. Hit test. And we've got some information about hit test saying it almost never happens when the code first loads. So that's what sometimes happens. You try a hit test right away. And well, it's not hitting now. It has to hit when, when you're dragging something or when you drop something or perhaps all the time if it's a bunch of asteroids flying around in space. So we talk about, um, we talk about that down in here and things that might go wrong when you are wanting to do hit tests on multiple objects, etc. So tips is an excellent place to have a look at that. Also in Zim, in the docs, the hit tests are all down under the code section here are the methods. So here are the methods. And there are interactions, effects, and physics, and then uh, one on hit tests right there. So here are the different types of hit tests. Hit test point was given to us by CreateJS, and that's a basic one. So it's usually easier to show you um, these hit tests rather than talk about them, so we won't spend too long here. But here are the other types as well, so a variety of different types of hit tests. Let's have a look at an example. Back on the Zim site under examples, we've just remade uh, in the collections here, we've just remade um, a, an app or whatever, uh, the feature here called hit tests, just remade this. It was made in Zim 1. Wow. So when we made it in Zim 1, now in Zim Cat, we're beyond Zim 10, we're Zim Cat, Zim Cat 4, it's 36% the size of Zim 1. So we've definitely reduced code. This, this was to make this back in Zim 1 was bigger. Now it's 36% the size to make it in Zim Cat. That's great. So here is the basic hit test right here that will detect if the shape of this object. When we say the shape, we mean anything, you see how I get a cursor there? Anything that has a pixel color, not this invisible area here, because this, this actual has a bounding uh, box, like this red bounding box, would go around the circle and, and this part's invisible. Or if it's a bitmap that has invisible parts, that doesn't count as the shape. So when the shape hits this point here in the middle, stage width divided by two, stage height divided by two, we're going to get a hit test. And we're doing that, we're testing it as we drag. So as we drag, here we go, boop, hit there. Circle hitting stage center, that's a hit test point. That's the default CreateJS one that says, is any point hitting some color? And that's not always convenient if we wanna to check to see if two circles are hitting for instance, here, like this. Well, we can't do that with two points. We could check to see if the center of the circle, the registration point of the center of the circle is hitting this shape, but we have nothing that detects if two, uh, two shapes are hitting. As a matter of fact, we still don't. We don't have that because it, it would be too much calculation. It's too slow to figure out if there are two colors. There are techniques where you can convert this to all one color and then do a blend mode. And if the blend mode turns out to be black, then since these are both converted to the same color, that would be, the difference would be zero, therefore it would be black. And that's uh, sort of a fancy, tricky way to do a hit test on two shapes. There's also uh, a hit test, hit test, um, what's it called? Maybe, yeah, hit test points, I think, or hit tests. Let, let's have a look at the docs again. Hit test path, sorry, I just remembered. Okay, so hit test path is when you make a blob or a squiggle, a zim blob or a zim squiggle. We haven't seen those. Perhaps we should do another basic, or we should do a basic on blobs and squiggles. That would that would be good. But anyway, blobs and squiggles are sort of paths that you can change Bezier points on and make strange looking shapes. 
Well, you can do a hit test to find out if a shape of something is hitting any of the points along a path, and you can specify how many points are on that path. But the more points you specify, the slower the hit test will get. So that, that's why it's a little bit tricky. Anyway, what we've done here to find out if these two circles are hitting is we've applied an equation of two circles. A radius, this is a circle with a radius here, this is a circle with a radius here, and this is the distance. And there's a simple equation that will say, well, are those radiuses intersecting like this? Boop, circles are hitting. And that's really fast because it's an equation and it's just testing to see if these two circle shapes are hitting. We also do that with this one right here. It's, is the shape of a circle hitting the shape of a rectangle? And that is called hit test circle rect. <laughs> so those are two equation-based ones. This is also an equation-based one. What we're going to check is the bounds of this circle, the bounds of it here, hitting the bounds of this rectangle. And watch what happens. Circle bounds hitting backing bounds. So it's already hitting. If you look at it, if you would draw a line, we didn't, we didn't do the red line like that, maybe we should have, but if you draw the red line like that, it's intersecting, where obviously they're not hitting. So that's just like finding out if two rectangles are hitting, and that's also an equation and very fast. Uh, here is, uh, is this circle, I can pick that circle up and twang it, is that circle, as I move it towards a registration point, is that circle hitting the registration point of that black square? Boop, it's hitting. See that? Boop, it's hitting. So um, uh, there are a couple other ones as well. One would find out if, say, uh, this uh, any shape. Now, if it's a circle, use circle rect. But if this were a weird looking shape or a, a bitmap that had background transparency, you might want to find out if that shape is hitting any of the points around a rectangle. That's called hit test rect. You might also want to find out if the shape is hitting any points around a circle. That's called hit test circle. So those ones test a bunch of points that have been put around the circle or around the rect. By default, I think it's the corners and the middle. So if you want, you run into problems if I hit right there and like if I if I hit here, there'd be no point there. So you can add points here, 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 and here by saying the number of points and it will sort of mirror it on all these edges or reflect it on all these edges or whatever. So anyway, have a look at that. We're not using those two types of hit tests in this example because we've introduced the faster hit test circles and hit test circle rect. Those are better to use in that case. But if we didn't have, if it weren't circles that we were testing against those rectangles, we would want hit test rect. And indeed, if it were some other shape against a circle, then we would want hit test circle. All right, uh, just so we don't forget, there's also, as mentioned, that hit test paths. And uh, why don't I show you where we can find out an example of that? Oh, it's worth it, uh, I guess. Uh, back on Zim, it's tricky to find hit test paths. It's probably in the docs, like if you looked up hit test path. I suppose that would be the easiest way. Why don't we do that? So hit like that, and uh, that didn't find it. That found something else. Uh, hit test points, and there's hit test path right here, and view vids, there's a vid on it, but no link to it. Okay, sorry about that. So no link to it. That's not the fastest way then. Instead, I'm going to look under examples, under collections. It was introduced in Zim 10. We should try and remember to add that to the hit test path would be fine. Here's an example right here, hit test path. So you see that it puts a bunch of these points around a blob path. Uh, the points are fixed, so the bigger it gets, the more likely something will pass through it. So you'll have to sort of think about that. But in general, if, you've, if you're hard coding the path, this is, this is a dynamic path that the user can change. But if you hard code it yourself, then you can see that we're recording the hit test there on the path. Cool. So that's hit test path. The other one is hit test grid. And hit test grid is useful if you've got a grid of things like your pixel drawing or something like that. If you're drawing uh, with pixels, it's fastest to detect where the, the mouse is with a hit test grid because that's equation based as opposed to point based. So those are the last two 
uh, types of hit tests. Let's go and make some code. Yeah, does that sound good? All right, so here we are in Zim Basics. Oh, darn it, let's do that. Open that up and show you here's where we would get that template. Go under code and then copy the template. Here's the template right here, copy. And then you're, you're all ready to go. Paste it into here. We've called it hit test. We come on down here and we can begin. Uh, const circle is equal to a new circle. We'll set it up so that we can drag that circle. Const rect is equal to a new rectangle. And we'll dot loc that at 100, 100. There we go. So we'll look at this in browser plus here. Oh, we're missing the circle. Center. What were you saying? But hang on, where do we put that? I'm so used to putting the center in there, I can't believe I forgot it. So there's our circle we're dragging. I can't drag the rectangle. And we want to check to see if those two are hitting. How about we add some color? We'll add some color to the circle, 100, comma, red. Like that. Well, why don't we make it green? And when, should we give it a bounds? Or not a bounds, but a, a border? A dark border of two. There we go. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. We should be able to tell if those are hitting. <laughs> okay, so now we want to tell if those are hitting. We could do a hit test. That would look like this. We could say if circle dot hit test rect would be a good one. The rectangle. Then what do we want to do? How about we say circle dot color equals red. Now we get to go to red and stage dot update like so. Great. There's the hit test. If the circles hitting the rectangle hit test rec. Oh, that's the wrong one. That that would actually work, but that's the circle shape. Is it hitting points around the rectangle? Okay, we actually want hit test circle rect. So that's relatively new. We added, so you might not see that in old examples. Uh, we added that probably in Zim 10 or something like that. I think we realized, wait a minute, we could do an equation between a circle and a rectangle. We also added hit test circles to do equations between two circles. Okay, so if the circle is hitting with a circle rect hit the rect, then uh, we're going to change a color. Well, here we go. It's not working. That's because we only did this test right at the start. So we built the circle, built the rec, checked to see if it was hitting, and then updated the stage. That means the test is over and it, it wasn't hitting. <laughs> so we want to test as we're dragging, most likely in this case. So we would say circle dot on press move. Um, circle dot on press move, and then we'll call an arrow function af, and that calls an arrow function, and we paste in there. Um, if you don't mind, there's uh, somebody has just missing the link to the box 2D. I did mention that it's in the code. So use F12 to check the code and then the link is in there. But let me just pop, pop off and uh, give him the link. Zim and we want uh, the docs for instance and the link to box 2D is here. doesn't have to wait. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> customer service. Well, it's like, oh, okay, it's customer service to you too. You're watching this video and you have to wait, but then, well, that's the life of the coder. And I just happened to notice the notification there. I thought I would uh, could get that to him quickly. Okay. So um, now as we press and move the circle, we're going to check this all the time. So we save this 
and refresh. And as we're moving, anytime we move, not now, but as, as the mouse moves, we're checking, and there it is, turned red. However, it, it stayed red, but that's, that's all we ask for it to do. As soon as it's hitting, turn red. We never told it to go back to green. We could say, else, um, turn green, which means we would want green here. Now, this isn't bad, but it's not totally the best because as we're moving it, if it's, if it's hitting, as it's hitting, we're going to keep on turning it red. Otherwise, we're going to keep on turning it green, which means basically every time we're moving, we're setting the color to green, 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 red, 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 green, 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 red, 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 red. So you might want something, you have to be a little bit careful. It's sort of like if circle dot color is equal to green and we're hitting, then uh, we're... Um, I guess this isn't quite the best either because then we're forced to do the hit test twice. The, the other part is like this. So the other part of this is else if I need, I need that one. Okay. Can you see this whole thing? Um, else the circle color is equal to red and cert and not when we're not hitting. Okay, if it's red and we're not hitting, then it's finally a great we're not hitting. But you see we're doing the hit test twice. So really, I suppose what we want to do is if the if it's hitting, else we know it's not hitting. And then we put an if statement inside that, but without all this. So if it's hitting and it's green, then we'll turn it to red. If it's not hitting and it's red, then we'll turn it to green. There we go, that would be a little bit more optimal. We do one single hit test. And uh, if it is hitting then and it's green, we turn it to red. Else, if it's not hitting, but the color is red, then we turn it to green. I don't know, this, this does a conditional every time we drag, a conditional never really sets it, but it does a conditional every time, and I'm not sure what actually takes more processing. Just automatically setting it, um, or doing the test to find out what color it is, uh, whatever. Uh, certainly when you make a score, say you made a score every time it hits, like if we increased a score, you have to watch that. And we have that in the tips, it's very common. It's sort of like you want to make a score if something hits. But unfortunately, it's going to keep on hitting, 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 hitting. So right right here, it would be hitting, 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 hitting every time I move. And the score would go up and up and up and up and up. So you have to figure out how to stop that from happening. Uh, one way would be if, if we're about to change it to red, then I would take away the score. Maybe if it comes back to green, then I would add the score. And as long as you put that in this one right here, then you're good. If you put the score going up here, SOG red or going down, uh-oh, uh, boo, pop. Okay, so if, if we put it in here, that's a good place for the score. Let's check it out. We refresh here. I'm going to take away some points now. How many points did I take away? Let's look. Just one boo. And you might be going, yeah, well, of course. Well, what if we didn't do that? What if we put it here? I maybe didn't even have that. But uh, yeah, so just say when it's hitting, take away points. You ready? This is what that looks like. 46 boos. 46 times it said boo. And if I could. If I could show you that all at the same time, it's, it's doing its best. Uh, yeah, I guess that does it. Here we go. Look at, see the numbers go up. Note the numbers don't go up when I'm not moving, but every time I move, the numbers go up. So that's the wrong place for it. And that's one of the things that you have to watch out for with uh, desktop reveal. That's one of the things you have to watch out for hit tests, um, especially when we get to tickers. Tickers happen all the time. 
if you start taking away score when it's hitting or adding score when you hit, you're going to get way too many scores. Okay, so that boo right there should be inside of here. It's a little bit beyond the basics, but you, you quickly come into that problem because normally when you hit test, you want something to happen. Uh, and you don't want it to happen over and over and over again. You just want to happen when it hits the first time. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. Sometimes, it, in this case, we had the color that we can check. Sometimes you have to do a check variable, and we talk about that in the tips. You might say, hit test, or hit hitting equals false. And then when it hits, you say hitting equals true. But you don't say that if it's already true. And that way, you don't keep on um, recording the hitting. All right, there we go. Let's, let's just show you that bounds thing that we were talking about. Uh, it's a bit easier as, as we show you here. Dot... Um, Outline. The pit. Where did I get a pit from? Outline. There we go. And I want to outline it after I center it, I think. And I think the outline will be dragged. So if I pick that up, yeah. You see, this is the outline of, of the circle. Um, right now, boom, it goes red when it's hitting. Note that it doesn't matter. The outline can hit. It's, it's really the, the shapes that need to hit there, the circle and the rectangle, because of the type of hit test we chose. Hit test, circle, rect. But if we said hit test uh, bounds, like that, bounds, here's hit test bounds. Is the circle, is the bounds of the circle hitting the rectangle? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So it's not even hitting there. Let's do a quick check on hit test rect, the, the other one that we put in there, hit test rect. This is not hit test circle rect, but hit test rect. And let's see if we can see something. It may be a bit tricky. Why don't we make the rectangle a bit bigger? 200 by 200. I think we'll be able to see it better now. Okay, so here we go. It's going to go red when the shape of this circle hits points around this rectangle. And are you ready? On the corner, there it is. So when the shape of the circle hits the corner, we're good. What about when the shape of the circle, oh, you see what's happening? We're slipping the circle in there because we, we, weren't, we didn't test the corner. So a rectangle, when we do hit test rec, by default, it's just the points around the, the rectangle. And we have one in the center too. So that could cause some problems if your circle is small, or even if it's the same size. So here's a small circle. It's not even recording as hit, but as we go and hit the center, it hits. So it's a point in the center, a point on those four. So the way we would change that is when we do the hit test rect, I believe the next one is how many points do we do? So if we say two, that will put a point here and a point in the middle, I think. Or maybe even it puts two, yeah, it puts two points on there. So it puts a point here and a point here. And also a point here, 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 and here. So uh, one would be right in the middle there. So if we add one more point, zero is zero points on the edge. One is one point on the edge. Bing, but not here. I have to hit that, I have to hit that middle point. As soon as I hit that middle point, pop, or the bottom point, it counts. But I can kind of slip through. Well, almost slip through, I guess. I don't know what's hitting. That must be the center. I just can't tell. Okay, so um, that is a little bit about that type of hit test. Right? So if you had a small shape and a big rectangle, it would better be better to swap it and do this. So I'm going to swap these two where I ask, is the hit or is the rect hit test circle the circle? So what that's asking is, is the shape of this rectangle, so that's any of the color hitting points around the circle? And that would be more likely to hit. Uh, except it didn't work. There it worked. It worked on is the, let's have a look at this, hit test circle, is the rect, do we do, still do it this way? 
Circle hit test, circle the rect. No, that, that doesn't make sense. So something's gone wrong. Oh, uh, right, I added only one circle. Okay, we don't want that, because that's how many points are on the circle. Okay, <laughs> never mind. So this is slightly different. Where the rectangle had how many points, it's how many points on each edge. With a circle, it's how many points you want to put around the circle. So I like we were all testing only one point on the circle. I'm not even sure where it would put that point. If we said two, it'd probably be the top and the bottom. Okay, so uh, just by default, I was going to say this will work better. Uh, and let's get rid of, we have nothing to do with the bounds right now, so I'll get rid of the outline. So what this is doing is it's testing a bunch of circles. I think it's eight circles by default around, uh, or eight points around the circle. Yay! Okay, but you run into some problems like that where you might be poking, poking the corner of that into the circle somehow, and until you get to one of these, it looks like it's a, a point here, a point there, a point there, a point there. So if you're in between, it doesn't work out. But still, that's better. You're not slipping right into the, uh, the rectangle. So um, we used to have to worry about that with rectangles and circles. And those are quite common to find out if rectangular shape is hitting a circle. Like if you have a little person, it's probably like a rectangle. If you're trying to hit a ball, that's a circle. You know, So it's, it's quite often we have rectangles and circles. We used to run into that problem. But now that we have hit test uh, circle rect, like that, and we swap these guys again. Um, is the circle, the circle matches the circle here. So is the circle, hit test circle, rect, the rect matches that. And, and this one, like I said, is, uh, as we did in the beginning, is an equation based, and then we're perfect. It never, it, it, will, it won't break. One thing to watch out for is the border of the circle is not considered a circle. So if we had a big fat border, like 20, uh, it's going to hit some of the border until it gets to the circle itself in the border, like halfway. The border gets put half on the outside, half on the inside. You can expand things as well. So there's ways to make, well, you can make an invisible shape and put it in. That's some things we do. Say, say we wanted to only hit the bottom corner of this. You could put a shape inside this and put the hit test on that shape inside and then it wouldn't hit out here. Uh, and that's another way, another technique for, you know, a strange shape. Say we had to hit test against an L. You could make an L and then make two rectangles in the L and hit test the two rectangles uh, against whatever you're wanting to hit. So you can do that kind of stuff too. But you can make the hit test area go bigger and smaller as well on some hit tests. If we look at the docs, we can, we can see that in the docs. If I look up hit, what is it finding when I do hit? It's finding something in here that is hit, that says hit. I never really noticed that. Usually I, these are a bunch of constants. Lighter, where is hit in here? I don't see it, but it must, must be in there somewhere. Anyway, hit test we'll go to now. And it starts off with our hit test. So bounds check. Uh, what we did to make hit test more efficient is if we are hitting a hit, hitting a point, we're doing a test against a point, we test the equation of the bounds first. And man, oh, we were so happy when we figured that out. And it was it was it was it was me. I just sort of said, wait a minute, why are we testing against the shape and all these points? These eight circular points or these whatever have five points around a rectangle. Why are we checking each of those points if the bounds aren't even hitting yet? So if we did a hit test bounds first, which is really fast and it's not hitting, then don't go on. It's not hitting. But if it is hitting the bounds, then check the points. And all of a sudden, our sort of sluggish hit tests just became instantly fast. And it was like, oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's Pragma. Let me just get the phone here. Hi, Pragma. It's Dr. Abstract here, and I'm recording. I'm so glad you called, though, but could you give me a call back in about 10 minutes or call mom? Okay, bye, love. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, bye. Okay, <laughs> that's Pragma. How exciting. Oh, <laughs> she's the one that you see, or they're the one that you see when you look at the, the website. Uh, okay.
So if we scroll down here, what have we got? Oh yeah, that's a balance check. Uh, we talked a little bit about that, but what we're wanting is this one. Hit test circle rect. It has an equation so we can set a margin. Hit test circles, a margin. Hit test bounds, a margin. That margin you can make, if you make it bigger, um, it hits sooner. And if you make it smaller, then it hits later. So you can adjust the margin on it too, if you so desire. And a margin would be good to do in, in this case that we were looking at. Do you remember which parameter it was? Is it next? Let's try 200. It's gonna hit test, hit probably quite soon. Yeah, it's hitting already. Okay, so that is it. If we've set the, the border to 20, we want a margin of 10. So that will push it out 10 pixels, because remember, the border happens halfway on the inside, halfway on the outside. So now let's have a look. Boop, right there. Boop. Okay, so that's taking into, you, you have to deal with that. Um, by the way, for games, people like playing games when they actually do well. They hate playing games when it says that they hit something and they didn't see it hit. Right, so even something like this, if it's an, a fast action game, it's like, wait a minute, I didn't hit that. You know, you might want to go the other way, and you can always go with a minus ten, and that gives them a little bit of grace where that's not hitting. But you know, they might say, well, no, 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 that's the tire. It doesn't matter if the tire is hitting, and there's the inside. Okay, so um, if you've got oh, I don't know, a slant, say this is somebody with a hairdo, and his hairdo starts here and goes up. Don't make this empty area be the hit area. Uh, do uh, make it use use the bounds or the rectangle thing, but then shrink the hit area to be inside here with a minus ten, so that they don't they don't hit when they're going. Wait a minute, that didn't hit. You know, there's nothing worse than that. And a lot of beginner games, that's what happens. Uh, they, I didn't hit that thing. Why why did it why did it blow up my star? <laughs> Okay, so anyway, that's uh, that's the Zim Basics on hit tests. Um, anything else? Oh yeah, I was mentioning before in the last one, we were going to look at tickers. Tickers are something that happen all the time. Say that we want to check to see if something's hitting, and we're not dragging it. It's just two things that are moving about or something. We could wiggle them back and forth, or it's asteroids that are flying. And I've got this character, and even if I'm not dragging it. So so what we can do is let's make this, this box go back and forth. And then we'll want to find out if the box is hitting the circle, even if I'm not dragging the circle. Okay, so here's the rectangle. And to make the box go back and forth, we could add a wiggle and then it's more random. Or we could dot animate like that. Sorry. Animate, and we will say the props are the uh, x position, and we can go a relative amount. We could say 300, so that that moves 300 from where it is. Or if we didn't put the quotes, then that would mean to position 300, which is I think about here. But I'll just say I'll use the quotes say 300 more than what it is, and. I uh, turn those things off and it still notified me. Uh, for Discord, we turned our Discord, our Zim Discord server now has Nitro. And there was a three free three months of Nitro if you get Epic Games or something like that. So what do I do? I install Epic Games and it starts telling me every single bloody game that it wants to sell me. And so I <laughs> turned the private thing on just before I began this. And it still showed me it. It's like, it must have been a really important epic game. Wow, all sorts of interruptions today, huh? <laughs> what do you know? Still, whatever. Life is good. So there's our props. We're going to animate it 300 more than what it is. And then we're going to say rewind colon true. <laughs> or try. And loop colon true. And here's what that looks like. Well, we could maybe go 600. Let's go 600 over. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. 
wait a minute. Oh yeah, I gotta be dragging. So that's the problem. I put it there, it looks like it's not hitting. But if I'm dragging, remember I have to be dragging to hit. So that's not a very effective way to do a hit test with the press move in this case. So what we'll want to do is, I'll copy this, copy, paste it down there, and I'll comment that one out, Pop, like so. We come up here, instead of doing this hit test as we press move, we have to do it all the time. So that's the function. This is the stuff that we want to do. And what we can do is put it in a ticker. Ticker.add, this arrow function right here. So we take all of this stuff, right here, cut and paste it in there. So instead of doing it in the function as we press move, we're doing it in the function that gets added to a ticker, which means it happens all the time. So all the time it's doing that. Uh, let's get rid of the minus 10 bit there. So if it's hitting the rectangle, we're going to change the colors and each time it hits, it would say boo, but we don't need to do that either. All right, let's see if it works. Ready? Do you have it? You see what we've done? It's not hitting yet. Put it in the middle here. Isn't that cool? So all the time it is checking. And that is quite common. If you've got a bunch of asteroids flying around and you want to see if it hits your spaceship or something like that, then you don't want to do it only when you're moving the spaceship. <laughs> you want to do it all the time. All right, if we're catching a bunch of stuff that's falling all the time, we want to find out if we've caught it, okay, or avoided it. That's called a catch and avoid. Super, anything else about hit tests I can think of? Mm, remember to see the tips on hit tests, and I'm Dr. Abstract, and we'll catch you later. It's been a delight to have you here in the Zim Basics. Go back to Zim, that's this guy right here, Dr. Abstract, and there's Pragma. They called on the telephone. <laughs> it's funny, huh? All right. Take it easy. Ciao. Uh, come visit us. Zimjs.com slash Slack. Always remember right at the end. That's this one. Or Discord. Um, that's this one. And also follow us on Twitter and check out YouTube. You're probably already checking out YouTube right now. We've got writings on Medium and WordPress. Uh, if you're well, once you wish, if you're just getting started, don't worry about it. But if you happen to use uh, Zim a lot and would like to donate to Patreon, that would be great. That would help us um, keep all this stuff going. I mean, we'll keep going anyway, but it just feels nice. Uh, don't do that if you're a student or don't have money. I don't need to. I, you know, we don't need that. But certainly, if you're a company, uh, you could consider it. That would be splendid. And that's this one right here. Let's see, that's GitHub. Follow us on GitHub with Stars Patreon is this one right here. And we even post some things on Facebook if you need to find us there. <laughs> Super. Ciao.